Hey, Emerald Lagasse here, and tonight on Emerald Live, we're experiencing the flavors of Cuba. We'll start with a refreshing pineapple daiquiri continued with a traditional ropa vieja. Enjoy this out of the world pork chops with mashed plantains, and for dessert, temptation bananas with dulce de leche ice cream. You don't want to miss this trip to one of my favorite islands right here on Emerald Live. Keep going and only be about 29 minutes left for the show. Fantastic. Welcome to Emerald Live, everybody. <laughs> Gonna go on a little culinary adventure tonight to uh, enjoy the best of Cuba. <laughs> oh, yeah, speaking about the best, folks, give it up for Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> You got a little of that Cuban beat that to uh, uh, go with yes. some stuff tonight? Yes. Yes. Si, senor. A little, uh, little Cuba food tonight. Yes. Looking Ready. forward to it. All right. We're going to start with a little pineapple daiquiri. <laughs> Trying to get us in the mood. And then I'll leave the rest for a surprise. <laughs> if you drink enough pineapple daiquiris, it'll be a surprise. <laughs> All right. Real simple. Um, good rum. Great start. This is a little Cuban rum. A lot of sugar cane. Makes good rum. Great. It uh, smells pretty, pretty good. Yeah. So we want to start with a little bit of ice. Hate to spoil it, but... You a big, uh, big daiquiri fan, Doc? Yeah, especially the rum part. <laughs> Always count on you, Doc. All right, we don't want to go with too much ice. I like to uh, basically take a few limes and, um, all right, well, maybe three. <laughs> Little pineapple. Let's take the uh, skin right off of this. This really wasn't in the recipe. I'm <laughs> kind of going by the seat of my pants right now, you know? <laughs> you know how that is, right? <laughs> kind of how Doc and I work every day. <laughs> now, so we got that, Doc. I like to just kind of, you know, just kind of... Oh, nice. Just... Nice. You know, with the ice. Yeah. Ooh. It's a very good way, too, before you have these daiquiris, to release a lot of frustration. frustration. Right. <laughs> All right, now. Lime juice. Fresh lime juice. Simple syrup instead of sugar. Why? We had just granulated sugar in there. We're gonna, gonna have that, you know, <laughs> on, your, on your palate. <laughs> so by taking the sugar and water, dissolving it, that uh, makes it nice and, you know, sweet enough. All right. And then since we're making a pineapple daiquiri, we'll have a little pineapple juice. You know these pictures, just... Yeah. Now I get a mess here, Doc. And then we'll add a little bit of rum. Yeah! 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 Ah. 
Now, the real test. The real test. See, Doc, I like to garnish it. Look, real fancy with oh, a little pineapple man. like that. Nice. Oh, yeah, babe. This is big, fancy show here. Big budget. A little, little lime like that. Then, the real test. Muchas gracias, senor. Gracias. Ah, too much yeah. rum? No. Perfect. 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 All right. Perfect. Yeah. All right, so there you have it. Hey, we're going to drink a few straw, vanilla, you know, pineapple daiquiris. And when we come back, we're going to move on to, like, a whole Cuban fish. Stick around. Dr. Gibbs. <laughs> us Cubans the flavor tonight. Now, I got to show you this. This is so simple but so delicious. They do a lot with whole fish. So they fish a lot. So we happen to get some beautiful striped bass. Now, you've heard it before. Look, no odor. Smells like the sea. Okay? You go to the fish market, go to the grocery store, you get some fish. Hey, don't be afraid to smell it. They're smelling you. <laughs> and if it stinks like fish, go for the veal. <laughs> it should be very neutral. Now, starting with great product, very simple. We're gonna just uh, take some olive oil. And we're just gonna lightly Cook down some sliced onions and bell pepper. Now, a little salt. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> little cracked pepper. Now, just gonna put a little heat on these guys. While we're doing that, Mortar and pestle, okay? We're gonna take lots of fresh garlic. If you're gonna get that excited, I'm gonna add more then. A little bit of oregano, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna sort of work that mortar and pestle in here now. Now, generally what's gonna happen, we're making a paste. Gotta add a little salt in here too. And it gives it like that little friction, sort of like sandpaper. Now, just working it against the sides. All the oils are coming out, real simple. Here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna take our fish, and we're gonna do about three slits to the bone. Look at how beautiful. Bright eyes, bushy tail. <laughs> so now, we'll flip this baby over, about three slits. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna flip the inside here, the fish. Just kinda give it a little slit like this. Same thing here. See, they've been gutted, 
Now we're gonna really make them taste good. So we're gonna take a little bay leaf like this, a little bay leaf like that. Then we're gonna take our garlic mixture. And what we're gonna do is just take half, put that in the inside. Just smear that all in there. All right? Oh yeah, baby. So we're gonna take our little garlic mixture like that. Smear that all in there. Woo! Oh yeah, baby. Now, if you got a little, wanna rinse out, a little wine? All right, now. We're gonna take half of this pepper mixture, olive oil in the bottom of this roaster, don't be shy with it. Little seasoning. Little crushed red pepper for some heat. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take half of this mixture for the bed. Then, the fish. Oh yeah, babe. Oh, wait till you see how happy it's gonna get now. <laughs> okay, a little salt and pepper here now. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a little vinegar. We're gonna take a little tomato. We're gonna take some lime juice. We're gonna take that white wine mixture there. Right? <laughs> now, we're gonna bless it with some more olive oil. A little bit more pepper. We're gonna put the oven on 400 degrees. We're gonna put some foil over it. We're gonna pop it in the oven. When we come back, I'll show you. Ropa Vieja! <laughs> of Cuba. Hmm, I wish you could smell it in here. <laughs> Ropa Vieja. That's what we're making next. Ropa Vieja. <laughs> Which means old clothes. <laughs> Anybody want to surrender a few pieces? All right, so basically what that is, is we use brisket, okay? Nice piece of brisket, not too fatty. And basically lots of onions, carrots, garlic, fresh parsley. You can use a little bit of coriander or what's called cilantro, salt and pepper. That's simple. And uh, basically how that's done, well, let me show you. We start with a little bit of uh, olive oil first. And I always like to, uh, this is a little trick from a little Cuban lady. I wanna season the bottom of the pan with uh, not only salt, but... <laughs> All right? I don't know where that came from, but... Sure wasn't Bobby Flay. <laughs> All 
Then I'm gonna take a little bit of bay leaf and break it up like this. And just kind of season that oil a little bit. Now, in goes the onions. In goes the carrot. And you gotta have like some garlic cloves, you know what I mean? Just... If you wanted to make this spicy, yeah. you could use a little jalapeno. My man says yes. Yes, it is. So now we're gonna put the jalapeno in here. We're gonna put the parsley. Then, we're gonna season our brisket generously. And then uh, fat side down. <clears throat> We're going in. Now, a little H2O. And then we're gonna bring it to a boil, cover it. We're gonna let this simmer. 40 days and 40 nights. No. But we're gonna let it simmer for a while. At least three to four hours. And that's when the whole roper thing comes in. All right. Smelling something good. After about 25, 30 minutes, you don't want to overcook it. Pete. Pete, get a shot of this, babe. I mean, I'm trying to really make you uh, look good here, babe. Look. Nice shot, Pete. Nice shot, babe. Yeah, give it up to Pete, huh? Oh, yeah, babe, look at that, huh? Does that look fantastic? Now, I got a nice little loaf here of Cuban bread. Now, if I, woo, was gonna serve that, I wanna show you. <sighs> How we doing, brother? So, what we're gonna do is take the fish out with a spatula, okay? Gingerly onto the platter. Gingerly. Then, this needs love. So we're gonna take this love What, the eyes bother you? <laughs> Here, look, just cover them up like that, okay? <laughs> now they got sunglasses on. <laughs> now I gotta show you a little, look at how nice and steamy that bread is. So you gotta have a little bit of bread like that. Then you gotta have a little parsley over here like this. But here's the whole trick to this Cuban fish. Fresh lime, right at the end. You just kind of. And there you have it, folks, okay? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, when we come back, I'm gonna show you this Ropa Vieja.
folks. Emma Lugasi here. If you're just joining us with a little taste of Cuba tonight. Everybody having a good time so far? <laughs> All right. Now we're going to get into the uh, hefty stuff. Uh, we have just served this uh, beautiful uh, whole Cuban fish. Watch out for the bones. How is it? Oh, it smells delicious. so good. Oh and uh, you guys doing all right over there? This is awesome. so good. Good. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, the uh, ropa, that brisket, cook it and cook it and cook it. <laughs> Poor brisket. It's got a really a bad reputation, you know? After it's done, you take it out of that stock, strain the carrots and the onions, or not, and then I have some of the liquid. You want to keep a little bit of that liquid in case you got to thin this down. Now, the, uh, the brisket, you shred, sort of like a slow-roasted uh, pork butt. But the brisket, you just shred it like I have here. Use a knife and a fork, a couple of forks. It's better to do it when it's warm than when it gets cold. That I can tell you. Now we've got to uh, do the vieja part of it. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with some olive oil. Again, I like seasoning that oil. A little trick. Now. Yes. We got the bammers over here. I like it. All right, so we're going to start now with the onions. Now, while the onions are cooking, again, we're going to use bay leaf, oregano, lots of garlic. You can never have enough garlic. Let's add a little more. Yeah. We're going to use some of this uh, green hot sauce. Everything OK, Jay? <laughs> His birthday today. Doesn't look a day older than I met him. So now what we're going to do is use that mortar and pesto, get all that garlic and that hot sauce in there. Now, now to the onions, a little tomato. Oh, yeah, babe. Some of that bell pepper roasted. Now you could use the hot chili peppers, too. A little bit of uh, sherry vinegar. Oh, and we got this paste in here now. We're going to add this right in here. Now. Now we're going to take the meat part of it. Add it right to this. Oh, yeah, babe. They don't look like dirty clothes to me. Does it to you? Looks real good to me. Now, look, guys. You see this here? Look, it's just a little common sense. Of course it looks a little dry. To the proportion of meat that we had to the sauce, we don't want it that, that sort of thick. So what we just do is that's why we save that liquid. We're going to uh, take a little bit of that vegetable liquid. What do you think? Oh, yeah. See how moist now it's looking here? Now, let's let it evaporate. Oh, yes. Wish you could smell this now. 
You can. <laughs> can you smell it? Yeah. All right. Well, now, we got to taste it. <laughs> to me, a little more salt. No, it's got plenty of garlic. <laughs> I would add some more hot sauce for my taste, though. Now, we'll let this simmer, and then we'll, uh, we'll serve it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, while this is simmering, one more shot of this, why not? All right, now, while it's simmering, I got some beautiful pork chops. Ooh. Yes, they do eat a lot of pork in Cuba. <laughs> I kind of like it. So, here's what we got to do. We want to marinate these pork chops. Okay, big uh, plastic zip. What we want to do is we want a little salt. And then basically in the bag they go. This is a fantastic way to marinate pork chops, chicken. You're gonna take fresh garlic in here. Yeah. Oregano. Fresh lime juice. A little bit of orange juice. Now, you want to zip this up. Try to do this the day before if you can. Okay? If you can. If you're not, a couple of hours will do it. Put it in the uh, refrigerator or the ice box there. Every now and then, just give it a little... Oh, yeah, look at that. So happy right now. Now, before we start cooking the uh, pork chops, plantains, okay? I got a little water here. This is a plantain, okay? You can see how green this is, that when they're not ripe, these are fairly young, they're going to be very, very hard to peel. So a little patience is going to is gonna really come in order here. What you wanna peel is, sometimes what I'll do is I'll do it with a, I'll just do it with a knife. I'll just kinda of cut it like that, and then I can really try to get in the skin, okay? Now, those marinated pork chops, when we come back, we're gonna start pan sauteing them as we begin to boil these plantains, and uh, while we're having a little commercial break, we're going to do a little uh, ropa yeah. vieja. Yeah. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. Flavors of Cuba tonight. Oh, look at this now, huh? During the commercial break, I decided to just let it simmer a little bit more, just get a little bit happier. Made a component. Oh, looking good. Took the marinated pork chops out of the old ice box. Gonna have a little olive oil. And then basically now what we're gonna do is go in there. Oh, yeah, babe. Some people uh, get a little freaked out adding liquid to oil. That's why they made those splatter things. <laughs> Try to dry them off as much as you can. Now...
You won't believe how many uh, emails I get on that www.foodnetwork.com about uh, people doing more than one job at a time. They sort of freak out about it. Meaning, okay, look, the plantains right now, they're like cooked. How do I, uh, what do I do? Pork chops ain't done yet. So uh, here's what I'm gonna show you first of all. You uh, wanna make sure that all the liquid is out. Now, I told you they're not really ripe, right? So it's gonna take a little bit to mash these. But they'll taste great. So now what I do is this. I add some garlic in here now. And I add a little bit of cream or a little, uh... oh yeah, babe. Now look, instead of, instead of using butter, not that there's anything wrong with butter, what's really, really, really good with this here is uh, we'll add a little salt in here, a little pepper. Now, we could use butter. What works dynamite with this is just a little drizzle of olive oil like that. Sounds crazy, trust me. Now, we'll mash it up good. It's still plenty of moisture, but we're just gonna put the heat on low. If that still worries you, put a piece of foil over it. If that still worries you, that's why they have numbers. <laughs> oh, you just figured that out. <laughs> See, about 200 would be warm. And so you could put the plantains or the mashed potatoes or the green beans or the broccoli, 200, warm while the pork chops are cooking. Now, let's check on these guys, shall we? See, they're marinated, and now we're gonna start getting the color on them once we start turning them around here. Hey, join the party. Now. So now what we're gonna do that, you know, all that moisture is about out now. We're gonna, now we're gonna add the olive oil in here, salt, pepper. All right. It's time for ropa vieja. So, the dinner bell is about to ring. <laughs> Gonna get some nice rice. Oh yeah, sticky too. Show you a little, a little secret here in a second here. Oh, sticky, love that. So now, we just kind of make like a little crater like that. Now. What you want to do is you want to taste before you go to the table. <laughs> oh man. And then basically now what you're gonna do is you're just kinda going. <laughs> now, what you can do is serve, take a little lime juice, 
Squeeze that lime juice right on there. And a little bit of pimento like that. And a little cilantro. Just like that. Ropa Vieja. Tremendous banana dessert that we're gonna do. Plus to show you this finish and this delicious pork chops that have been marinating when we come back. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. Speaking about that, pork chops are working just mighty fine, mighty fine. During the commercial break, I told you about these beautiful bananas. Took bananas on a buttered pan. Watch this, in a saucepan, we're gonna take brown sugar and, uh, and butter. So that kind of has the making of a caramel, right? Cinnamon, little nutmeg. Now, I'm gonna add the juice of an orange and a little bit of that good Cuban rum. <laughs> now, we're gonna let this dissolve, melt down, make this little syrup. While that's happening, it is time for pork chop heaven, baby. So, we're gonna take just a little beef broth and deglaze it. Let that steam just kinda get all, look at that. Look at him getting happy over there. Oh. Now. Chicarones. Oh. Yeah, pork rinds. Wow. Oh, yeah. I love them. Yeah. You know, we got this dude down in Lafayette, Louisiana. Yeah. My friend Marcel. Uh -huh. Get, oh. <laughs> Anyhow, don't get me started. All right, all right. So, if I was gonna serve this to you, here's how I would do it. I would take a little mash plantain. And then, I would take one and two pork chops. Then, the juice of the lime. Oh. The juice yes. of the lime. Yes. You could, if you want to splurge, you could do a couple of orange slices. Nice. And then you want to take some of the chicarones, yeah. oh. the pork rinds. Yeah. Oh. Right on there. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, yeah. Can you feel it out there? Yeah. There you have it, a little pork chop right there. Now. Three hundred and fifty degrees, the oven. You take the syrup. Pour that over those luscious bananas. And you bake them in the oven for about 25 minutes. And Pete, look at this. Look, Pete. Okay. Now. To finish. These luscious bananas. 
Use a spatula. Maybe three, four. Four. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then, the leche ice cream. Dolce de leche ice cream. And then, like, you didn't have enough leche, you just kind of put a little bit of that like that there. And some toasted coconut. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Get a shot of that, huh? There you go. Oh, yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. The food of Cuba. Yeah. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm Emerald Lagasse. Yeah. Bonus Nation!